explore the default project that we get when we create a uh, new Java project in IntelliJ IDEA with some sample code included. Um, I'm just going to expand, you can see there's a little, little arrow here, um, which basically means that we've contracted our code to make it appear in one line. You can un uncontract it by clicking there, or you can uh, click on the little green thing. But I'm going to, I'm going to put it out in, its, in multiple lines. So, um, there's quite a bit of code here that means that when we run the project, all it does is print out Hello World. And we're going to try and um, get a basic understanding of what some of these um, bits of code are for. So we've got two things uh, in our in the code in that are kind of structural. Firstly, we've got this declaration here, public class main. So Java is an object-oriented programming language, um, and it requires us to pretty much to write everything um, inside what are called classes. And the idea of a class is normally uh, to represent a real-world object or concept. Um, so you might decide if you're building a system to manage the people who work in an organization, you might have a class that's an employee and that class might have different bits of information about the employee, like their name or um, their contract start date or um, how long their notice period is. Um, so when we, with the Java program, when we're starting simply, um, we might have a class called main that represents where we start running the program. Okay, it doesn't have to be, the class doesn't have to be called main, but it's pretty common um, to do that. Um, and then the launch point of a Java application is something called a method. Um, and the method is everything selected here. Um, the contents of the method are the things inside these curly braces. In the same way, the contents of the class are the things inside these curly braces. So inside the main method, we have, uh, sorry, inside the main class, we have a main method, and inside the main method, we have some code that prints out hello world. Now, one of the requirements for a Java application um, is that it has a method that is called main. And you'll notice here we've got main, and it's in lowercase. And the convention for naming methods in Java is to name the first, if there's more than one word, um, we write the first word all lowercase and then if there are subsequent words we'd start the first um, letter of each word with a capital letter and then go back to, to lowercase. That differs from a class where we capitalize the first letter in every word and that helps us tell them apart but you can also see IntelliJ IDEA has given some different coloring to us as well to, to help with that. We've got a lot of other um, words here lit up in blue um, so we'll talk about these briefly, but we'll cover them um, in depth in, in later later parts. So firstly, you're seeing the keyword public um, twice. Um, and public, this is to do with how we can um, see and use code from elsewhere in a larger program. Now, at the minute, this is, this is the entirety of our program, so it's not actually that important except that we would typically want to be able to access the main method to run our program and therefore that is public and in order for us to be able to see the method from inside the class the class is also public for now you could make most things public in the long run we would want to continue doing that um, because sometimes we don't want all of the inner workings of our program to be accessible to other parts um, of the program but when we're learning um, uh, right at the start we can we can just make things public to know that we can access them here we've got the keyword class that just tells us that this is a class that's called main so every time we declare a class we need to keyword class and the name of the class and then as I mentioned we put the things that belong inside something inside braces if we miss a brace so if I delete this first brace we're going to start to see errors in our code and IntelliJ is saying well it's actually expecting a, a brace okay it won't always get it right um, but it will help us with some um, errors that we that we find and if that brace wasn't there and we tried to run our code we're going to get a build uh, failure. It's not going to be able to compile. We get the output from the compiler and it's saying there's a, a brace expected on line one. So we'll put that back in. Okay. Similarly, if we were to delete the final brace, okay, 
we're getting a, a warning here and it's telling us one is expected so if I run it it tries to compile it it fails to compile it and this time it's actually saying it reached the end of the file while parsing so it was trying to parse the text to convert it um, into something for bytecode um, and it said I wasn't expected to be finished but I've got to the end of the file um, so again we'll put that brace back in so um, we've got some other keywords in here as well so we've got this static keyword and the static keyword um, kind of tells us for now you can kind of imagine it as it trying to avoid or ignore the the fact that we would normally use object orientation okay if we were to think back to this idea of having a class for an employee um, each employee in the system would have a different um, contract end date most likely or contract start date um, so that's something that applies to um, an individual occurrence or instance um, of the employee class um, but sometimes we want things that sort of apply in to everything okay um, and the static keyword allows us to do that okay we've then got um, void okay now because this bit of code here is a method, a method is a small chunk of code that does something. Now, sometimes when you run a small chunk of code, um, you need to get something back like an answer. So if I wanted to write a piece of code that was going to um, calculate, I don't know, the distance traveled based on how fast I've been going and, and how long I've been going at that speed for, the method would want to send back a um, some kind of number at the end. Okay, if we don't send anything back from a method, we need to say that we need to say the method isn't going to send anything back. And in Java, we use the keyword void to do that. Okay, main as we've already uh, encountered is the name of the method. Um, so this method is called main. We can choose what we call our methods within reason, um, but for the, the the sort of launch method of a Java application, we do have to call it main. But when we add other methods to our code, they will have different names. And then we've got a set of brackets. And inside the brackets, we have this string and some square brackets and args. So this method... Um, is likely to be a method that we are going to invoke from the command line. Okay, actually, in reality, most of what we're going to do in this course is, is running it from straight from within the IDE. But if we were using the command line and we command, compiled our Java application, we might run it from the command line and we might give it some information in order for that method to run as we would like it to. Okay, so we might say main and then, or the name of the, the um, you might say main and then we might give it some information so we might do like a hyphen and um, I don't know some information it needs in order to be able to run and we might put in multiple bits of information when we um, run our application from the command line so we get what's called an array um, you can think of that a bit like a list uh, at this stage um, of strings now a string is just a sequence or a string of characters so some text basically so what we're saying here is when we run the main method, we might have a series of bits of text that we might want to use. And if we were to use them, those bits of text are in something called a variable uh, called args. Now we're not going to do that just yet, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, but that, that's what that's for. And then finally, we get into the, the body of the method where we've got this one line of code um, where it uh, says system.out dot print ln uh, which is short for print line or print um, some something with a new line terminator at the end of it um, and inside the method we have something called a string literal which is where we've basically said this is some text that needs to be treated as text and in Java the way we do that is by putting uh, quotation marks around it that's so it doesn't confuse the text with something else in our code like the name of a method um, or so on and so forth um, and in Java the way to get something to print out is to to type this system dot out dot print line so basically we're saying get this computer's system find the output that it's, it's configured to use and using the output print out 
whatever goes inside the brackets. And then finally, at the end of a line, um, and this is a statement in Java, we have a semicolon. And Java requires us to put semicolons at the end of statements. So again, if I was to delete that semicolon, we're going to get an error. Um, it's going to say semicolon expected at line three. And again, if I was to try and run the code, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail to compile um, with that error message. Java is very picky. OK, brackets must match. So if I, for example, delete that closing bracket there, we'll get another error. We can see it's saying a, a closed bracket is expected. Now, it doesn't always get these right. Um, but what you will need to do is to make sure that in any Java program, all of your brackets are balanced. Now, the other thing is certain things in Java can't live um, in places they're not allowed. So, for example, Java requires every method to be inside a class. So if I try and cut this code here and put it after my class, we're going to get all sorts of warnings. It's going to say class or interface expected, um, brace is expected, um, but more importantly, class member declared outside of a class. So a method is a member of a class and it's saying this is not where it should go. And we've got red lines everywhere. So we can put that back in main and, and we'll be OK. Um, so um, similarly, um, in Java, um, if we've got a public class, it's got to match the name of the file that it's in. And if we were to look at um, this file inside the, um, in, um, the, the file explorer, uh, so in, I'm on a Mac, so it's Finder, um, we would see that um, it says main.java, okay? So if I change this name to something like, I don't know, uh, main class, okay, we're going to get some errors here, and it's going to say main class is public, should be declared in a file name main class.java. Now we could rename the file, that would be fine. Um, for now, I'm just going to keep it named as uh, main. Okay, so that's kind of a bit of an exploration of the, the project. Um, if we want to start writing our own code, we could do that. Let's say we want to print out another line. We can say system.out.println. Um, my name's Andrew, so we will say hello, Andrew. And again, it wants a semicolon at the end. OK, so we'll put a semicolon in. We can now run our code and we'll get two uh, messages printed out. Hello world and hello Andrew.